Uh, we're live on this uh, eighth episode of the European Photo Show. Uh, I'm Michael Moraz. I will be hosting this episode with uh, Hugo Che. Hello, Hugo. Hi, Michael. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How about you? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, so we have two guests tonight. We're going to be talking about Switzerland, the Alps, and some landscape photography. We have uh, Dominique Dubier. Hello, Dominique. Hello, Michael. How are you? Fine, fine. And we have uh, Johan Penienberg. Hello, Johan. Almost right. Almost. <laughs> Sorry for your name. <laughs> How are you tonight? Perfect. Almost. <laughs> Good. So, uh, we are also trying tonight this new uh, Q&A uh, thing uh, that Google introduced this week. Uh, so if you are watching this and you want to try out uh, these new features, uh, feel free uh, to try it. Let's start with uh, Dominic. Yeah, just, let, just let me say oh, yeah. about this on the event page. You well. will be able to see uh, the video, and if you play the video, it will uh, open up a big window where you can see the, the video large, and there will be uh, uh, probably, <laughs> hopefully, a place space on the right to, to input, to submit your questions, and uh, we will try to, to read them live to, to our guests. So if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them. We, we want your, your input. OK, thank you, Hugo. Um, let's start with Dominic. Uh, Dominic, can you tell us a bit about yourself, uh, where you came to photography, what kind of photography you enjoy? and such things? Yeah, of course. Um, first, I have to say that I'm an amateur photographer, so I don't live from photography. I wish I could, but uh, it's not the case. <laughs> um, my background is um, I started taking pictures when I was 18, I guess, uh, when my father offered me my uh, first camera. So the first thing I did at this time was to know a bit uh, the technical things, the basics of the camera, how to use it, uh, aperture, speed, depth of field, and so on. Um, and then is as soon as I started traveling uh, with my wife around the world, that really the photography became for me very important. And now I can say it's a, it's a real passion for me. And it's growing uh, almost every day. <laughs> so it's a good thing for me. Um, what I like is shooting, of course, but um, processing and sharing uh, things and exchanging with each, uh, other people is also very important for me. Uh, I always say that 50% um, uh, of the fun in photography for me is taking the picture, but the other 50% is processing the image and sharing the image with other people. Well, that's not only taking pictures for me, which is really interesting and important. And that's why I sometimes um, yeah, organize um, exhibitions uh, here in Switzerland about my work. And I just finished last month uh, an exhibition about Iceland, uh, which was very interesting to, to talk with people. It's amazing to see how many people have gone to already to Iceland and all will, they want to go there. It's, uh, it's really, really incredible. And having this exhibition, it's a good way for me also to, to exchange ideas and uh, talk with people. Sometimes get strange visitors, but... Sorry? You sometimes get strange strange visitors, like me. Yeah, I, I <laughs> trolls also, or <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. Um, of course, Google Plus also is a, is a nice way to exchange and to share things. I made quite a number of new friends here on Google Plus, and not only virtual people, but also real people like Johan. Uh, we are going sometimes shooting together here in Switzerland, so it's, it's a nice benefit of Google Plus, I must say. <laughs> and um, as I am a member also of the Swiss Photo Club, here on Google Plus. Uh, I have also met other people, other photographers during the, the photo walk 
uh, photo walks that we have organized uh, together. Um, one thing that is quite inter interesting to note is that um, before I joined Google+, Plus, I mainly took pictures uh, when I was traveling abroad uh, with my wife or alone. Uh, I thought that good photo locations were always far away from, from home, uh, in another country, exotic country, and so on. And nowadays, uh, it's a bit different. I discovered really nice place around here in Switzerland, and even a few, few blocks from, uh, from my house. And probably this is uh, due to Google Plus, because Google Plus is pushes me to, uh, to take more pictures than before. So now uh, it's a good thing that I can go out and take pictures uh, just around, around here in the corner. And what is interesting also is that uh, also I, I'm, I've always been living in Switzerland. I probably know Switzerland much less than Johan. Which is a bit strange, but maybe it would change uh, in ten or twenty years or so. I hope. Where, where exactly in Switzerland are you based? Um, I live in a very small village um, near Fribourg, which is in the center of the the, the the east, the western part of Switzerland, between uh, let's say Geneva and Bern. Okay. Oh. Um, so, you say you don't know much about Switzerland, but uh, I'm sure you've been uh, photographing around, and uh, do you have any location you enjoy that uh, maybe our viewers would like to go if they are in Switzerland? Well, in Switzerland, I'm, I need, uh, it can be anywhere. Um, I, I like the winter because um, when there are much snow, some mists, it's very interesting how landscape can can be set simplified by uh, by, the, by the, the winter. I mean, the snow is uh, is really interesting to, to capture. Uh, spring and autumn are also nice season, although they they are not so long here in Switzerland. Uh, the <coughs> spring is there are only maybe two to three weeks where the the you have tender greens, nice vegetations. And also in autumn, it's also uh, very short uh, because uh, leaves are uh, are falling quite quite quickly here. Um, so with Switzerland, I don't have really precise spots. I mean, I usually also uh, take pictures around lakes uh, because I'm a landscape photographer and I can say also a seashore uh, seascape photographer. But of course, here in Switzerland, we don't have any. Any ocean or sea, uh, so but we have some lakes, so that's that's quite interesting. Um, what I love also uh, is the desert. Uh, of course, not in Switzerland. I have <laughs> obviously. <laughs> I haven't found it yet, though. No. <laughs> not yet, not yet, at least. <laughs> no, I went I went several times in um, in Morocco and Algeria, and I really uh, like the the light there. The light is really incredible. Uh, I like uh, the shadows that we can find uh, with the, the sand dunes and the ripples uh, made by the by the lights and the, and the dunes. Um, also, the fact that we are nearly alone in this you know this gigantic piece of uh, sands and it's very very relaxing. There, there is no pollution. There is no noise. It's really, it's really incredible for me, and maybe the best example is when before going to bed in the desert. If you just look at the sky, uh, there are so many stars in the sky. It's, it's really amazing because there is no light pollution there, so um, you you really have millions of, of stars, and you don't find this here in Europe or, uh, or probably uh, in other places. And this is quite magical. The fact that there is no noise also, it's very relaxing. So I want to, to ask you, give you a bit of a quiz. So if you don't know Switzerland that well, or let's see who knows Switzerland best, and I want you to, to tell me 
where this was taken. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Johan knows it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's. Uh... Johan, help you me. Come to more, you should come to more photo walks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think this is Pilatus, no? This is Pilatus, right. right. <laughs> Correct. This I is thought uh, it was not good. <laughs> This, one. this is a, a mountain um, right above Lucerne, and I was there last week okay. for, for business, not for photography, but I took some photos. Unfortunately, we had snow, and the mountain was covered with clouds for most of the day. <laughs> so it's actually a it's very difficult place to, to, to come home with nice pictures. Yeah. Okay, enough with that. <laughs> no more quiz questions. Just one. Okay. Okay, so Dominique, uh, your landscape photography, what do you enjoy photographing? I mean, okay, the, like how you like to photograph it is like lens, um, long exposure, or is it black and white, or is it a bit of everything? Um, it's a bit of everything, in fact. I discovered long exposure uh, almost one year ago. And it's a really an interesting technique because it, it can be more, let's say, creative, uh, more artistic uh, than without long exposure. Um, it's quite a new way to express something different because, of course, the result, the end result, is very different than what you see through the viewfinder when you take the picture. So it's always uh, interesting to see how it how different it is from, from the, the picture you have in mind. Um, I like black and white photography also a lot. And probably more and more these days, uh, maybe I'm a bit tired of these uh, punchy colors that you can find some usually. I think it's black and white is maybe less distracting than color uh, images. Or at least you you're get tired of color uh, images maybe more quickly than black and white. But that's only my opinion, of course. Um, it's also, um, maybe it's also easier to give more drama to, to the picture or to guide the, the viewer to a specific uh, point of interest in the image. That's why I, I like black and white. So it's offered me more, let's say, creative uh, creativity to, to, to express myself. Okay, you said earlier that you enjoyed the post-processing part. Um, what kind of uh, processing do you apply to your images, uh, and uh, which uh, tools do you use? Um, okay, if I if I can just explain a bit a bit of history, because uh, before the digital uh, age, I was. Uh, uh, photographer who was in my dark room in the basement, so it was very different than, than now. And I started taking pictures and processing images, um, black and white images, in my in my dark room. Uh, it was very interesting because uh, always amazing to see um, in the in the developer bus how the the image is coming to life, and that's maybe something that a lot of uh, digital photographers don't know about. But it's very magical, the fact that you see this image going through uh, the, the developer bath. Then I, I processed also color images uh, using um, uh, infochrome process and infochrome papers. I don't know if, if any one of you have already, already used this uh, kind of color processing. Uh, Michael or? No. Yeah, it's it's a very it's a technique used by really many many photographers be before the digital age uh, from uh, slides. It's only from from slides. Um, of course, nowadays it's a bit uh, different uh, with, with the digital uh, processing. But the paper also was really incredible. It has a kind of uh, metallic look. And if you put a light on, on it, then uh, the, the image is really is coming, is shining, let's say. It really shines through, through the medium. Uh, it's like a kind of 3D effect, if you want. 
and that uh, it's really a, a nice paper. Of course, it's what you used in the exposition, though. No? Sorry. It's also what you used in the exposition. No, 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 not at all. No, no, no. Okay. This is, this was pure pure digital paper. Uh, there is no paper on the market now that is that look like uh, okay. looks like the the Fulcrum paper, unfortunately. But of course, it was a very uh, time-consuming process because um, you have to count at least 15 to 20 minutes to have the full process. You have three buses, and then you have to rinse also the, the paper at the end. And uh, if you count also the trial and errors, failures, and so on, uh, I spend a lot of weekends in my in my dark room this way. And uh, the best example is when. You just make a big print, uh, so you you go through the different buses, 15 minutes, you, you switch on the light, because this is only one thing that <laughs> is not so easy. You have to be in complete darkness uh, to process color uh, images, so it's a bit risky to move, a bit risky to manipulate the paper, but at the end you switch on the light, and you have a, and if you have an image with, the, for example, a blue sky, and you have there is a trace on the on the image, and it was due to a small piece of dust in the in larger. So uh, you have to start again. And so you said this is digital. No, 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 no. Oh. It was that's the oh, before. And uh, maybe that's why I don't I don't like blue skies anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But it was fun anyway. It was fun. Now, of course, uh, I don't do. I don't use this technique anymore. Uh, I just uh, using. Uh, I mean, Photoshop. Uh, my my process is quite simple. In fact, I, I'm opening my uh, my raw file in uh, Adobe Camera Raw. I'm doing some um, basic adjustments like uh, removing dust spots, uh, cropping, maybe. Um, Touching the color balance a bit, and then I open the, the file in Photoshop where I have more uh, uh, more power uh, to to do what I want to do. But uh, here, what I say basically is that I work on brightness, on contrasts. Uh, I do some some dodging, some burning too, on specific part of the image if necessary. Um, I apply a vignette if if necessary too, and then at the end of the process, I, I sharpen the image uh, according to the to the medium, if it's print or if it's uh, an image on the on the internet. So you, men you mentioned uh, you, you were taking 15 to 20 minutes uh, easily when it was done digital. Yet, how long do you take per image? Well, <laughs> it depends on the image. Uh, really, some some images are really. It's quite uh, quick. I mean, maybe uh, 20 minutes or so. But at the end, you have, you know, you do it that once. Before digital age, you have for each print, you have to redo the same, the same. Thing. Yes. You have to dodge to burn again, again, and again on on, on each print that you that you make. So that's a big difference. I see. So, so here's another one. <laughs> <laughs> the quiz continues. Anybody? Now you have to show it big now. Very nice. It's around the lake. Yes. <laughs> no, it's not a lake. It's, a lake. <laughs> it's, it's the rhine. It's a trick. <laughs> the rhine river. Okay. Is it Lutzen? Basel. Basel. Okay. Okay. Nobody gets any marks for this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Dominique, do you have any images to share with us tonight? Sure. I will try to share my screen. Do you see? Yes. Right OK. So my first image is uh, the title is Finding the Bird. So yeah, we can oh, start that's the my point. You have five minutes to find the birds. <laughs> um, 
This is a, a long exposure of nearly something like a bit less than three minutes. And this is uh, along the shore of Lake uh, Neuchâtel in Switzerland. It's taken in the, in the early morning. And I appreciate that moment because I was really alone. Uh, it was very, very early in the morning. Uh, just some birds going around. It was very calm, very relax, relaxing. You like to be alone, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciate that moment. Uh, I don't like having uh, hundreds of uh, Japanese people just around me. <laughs> um, I was quite lucky with this one, with the movement of the of the clouds, because uh, it, the the movement was from behind towards me, and I think it gives a nice dynamic effect. Yes. Nice. Place. <laughs> I need to go there myself, actually. Next one, you, you, you know also, Johan. Yeah. And uh, this one was taken uh, on set set also on Lake Neuchâtel. It was during a photo walk with Johan. It was really a nice, a nice moment. Uh, I quite like the combination of the reeds and the pier ending uh, to the warm color of the sunset there. And uh, well, thanks to, to, to Johan for let, letting me discover this place, even if this location needs need some trespassing. Hopefully, there was nobody there at that moment. <laughs> the next one is not uh, taken, has not been taken in Switzerland. It's an Iceland uh, picture. Uh, it's taken in central Iceland in, the, in a really beautiful area called Land Manalaugar. It's very hard to pronounce. <laughs> um, it's located in the highlands. It's not so high, but uh, you can see that there is still snow on the, on the mountains at the beginning of July. And uh, the red color uh, that you can see is due to um, uh, rhyolite is kind of volcanic rock there in uh, in Iceland. Uh, the image is called uh, Lonely Heart because if you look at the bottom left, you can distinguish shape of a heart, and it's it's really interesting because if I I really noticed this shape by by accident while walking, uh, if I would have walked just. 50 meters uh, more left or 50 meters more right, of course, this shape will never appear to me. So um, the thing to remember is that interesting and original point of view can just be found anywhere and just around the corner. Or just You have just to have to open your eyes. That's, that's the message, I think. <laughs> do you do a lot of planning uh, for your uh, shoots or...? Uh... Yes, usually I'm I'm quite prepared to I, I know where I have to go. Uh, I've made some researches on on the internet, of course, Google Maps, um, and uh, I don't like go going uh, abroad without precise idea where to go. Of course, this has some drawbacks because uh, you you cannot just say oh, okay I want to stay here one or more one or two days more uh, because you have a plan. So that's the drawback. But otherwise, I think it's it's interesting because uh, you you see uh, plenty of things that way. Um, the next one is in the winter, as you can see. It's maybe one of my favorite uh, black and whites from last year uh, or this year even. Uh, first, because it was a very foggy day in winter, and um, this helps uh, to simplify the image a lot. Uh, we, we just we are just attracted by these trees, which are really the the main subject, of course, without any distracting distracting elements. And second reason why I like it is uh, because it's just a few a few kilometers from home. So I, I'm quite happy that uh, we don't need to travel thousands of miles to get uh, a nice shot. And uh, yeah, sometimes the opportunities are just around the corner. Next one is also 
uh, a winter image. This is a quite min minimalist uh, picture. I shared it with the Minimal Monday team from uh, Olivier Dutré. Um, again, here, uh, the winter and the mists um, have really uh, simplified the image and emphasized this fence. Um, of course, this kind of weather, weather is, um, does not last long, so you have to hurry you have to hurry a bit because snow can uh, melt very fast and the mist is of course very inconsistent uh, and it moves very fast so the problem is to find the time to go just to where when you need to go uh, and that's not so easy especially if you have a family <laughs> so uh, it's not so always so easy to just grab the camera and going out but um, yeah, I like this kind of weather in, in winter. Do you use any special equipment to shoot in the snow? Uh, you mean, what do you mean, camera, camera gear, or uh, yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> any camera protection or any gear for yourself? I guess it's pretty cold. No, not really. I mean, yes, of course, I I have a jacket, a good jacket. I have gloves. Uh, that's that's for sure. And afterwards, I take a bath <laughs> or a, a long shower, a warm shower. <laughs> that's the idea. <laughs> and a coffee. Sure. And the last last image is again a Icelandic image. Um, it's called the Black and Dark, and this one has also been taken in Iceland. Um, of course, what has attracted me here is the waterfall, but also the, um, the dark mood created by the, the black rocks and the dark sky, which has uh, added a bit of, of drama to the, to the image. And again, the color of the rocks, this dark, uh, dark color is uh, due to the volcanic activity in the, in the region. Maybe that's one 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 of the reasons why I like Iceland is really the the dramatic feeling that you can experience there uh, at any place at any time because the, the weather conditions are changing so fast that you have really plenty of um, opportunities to to take pictures. I think you have no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my last image. Okay, great. Beautiful images, Great Dominic. Thanks. Thank you very much for sharing with us. Uh, we'll be moving to Johan now. It's your turn to get some questions. Okay, so sure. let's start with the beginning and uh, who you are, what you like to photograph, and such things. Okay. Um, I'm, uh, of course, uh, in Switzerland, uh, but I am originally Dutch, which is uh, probably not everybody knows it. I've moved to Switzerland about five years ago, uh, just to follow a, a dream, basically, to, uh, to live in the Alps. Um, I've been doing photography for all of my life, basically, but um, most of the times I didn't have enough time to uh, to really produce something or to focus on it, so it's more a side thing. But since five years ago, also I've been focusing more on it in the last, I guess, two to three years. I'm trying to do this professionally, so it's a full-time thing for me. And, uh, I actually go out quite a lot. For instance, the coming month I'll be gone three, four weeks to uh, to shoot autumn here in uh, Switzerland in the Alps. See what comes out of that. Um, my primary focus is landscape. I also did a bit of micro in the past and uh, a bit of wildlife, but that's not my main focus. I'm trying to focus on landscape. I do both black and white in color, and I try to use uh, uh, long exposures when I think it adds to the scene, basically. Um, yeah, it's a bit of background. Um, Anything else you want to know? Well, yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, you moved to the Alps because you like uh, the mountains. So do you go a lot uh, in the mountains to shoot? Yeah. Well, actually, we've, when I was young, we went to uh, 
to Austria a lot with the family. And uh, I always, always hated it when I had to come home because the Netherlands is a bit of a flat country with a lot, not a lot of features in it. So it was always in the back of my mind. Uh, mind. And when I had the opportunity I, uh, I had five years ago, I did it. And uh, no regrets so far. It's a beautiful country to live in. Uh, nice people, including Dominique. And, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Johan. I've, I think I've seen a lot of Switzerland already, but uh, the nice thing in the Alps is that um, with the changing weather, uh, there's always something interesting around the corner. I don't know how to say it, but I always seem to find something interesting. And uh, whether it's a, it's a certain light situation or whether it's a certain weather situation or just a scene which is beautiful or a lake, with, it's, there's always something. And uh, if uh, they always say, uh, in photography, you just have to go out and you get something. And in Switzerland, I have to say, I find that to be very true. You just go out, whatever weather, uh, maybe except for summer. But uh, most cases, I come home with something I like. Yeah. So what do you enjoy most uh, shooting in the mountains? Uh, what do I like most? Uh, I'm not somebody who documents things because I find that very boring. So I'm not going out to shoot a location or to shoot uh, a city or whatever. Um, I go out to specific locations in specific uh, circumstances like the weather and see what I can find. And um, so it's usually landscapes, but it's, it, it can be uh, a close up of a mountain top, it can be a lake with reflections, it can be uh, the last piece of ice drifting in, in, in a bit of water. Or, or the fall colors is just uh, yeah whatever I see uh, there has to be something which adds to the image so it's not only the scene but there needs to be a little bit of light a little bit of better I guess you know what I mean do you try to photograph any wildlife uh, only accidentally <laughs> <laughs> no it's uh, usually when I go out uh, I, I go with a full backpack and I need to I need to restrict myself in what I take. I would love to take uh, longer lenses, but I usually manage to stick to a 72 on it as my biggest one. And, uh, and then you have to be lucky. So sometimes I run into a Capricorn or I run into uh, uh, a, a, an Alpine Marmot. Or uh, recently uh, I ran into, uh, how do you call it in English, a vulture. And uh, all those are nice moments. And if you then manage to, uh, to quickly uh, change the settings of your camera and then have time to actually shoot it, then uh, I can be quite happy. Yes, but it's not the focus. But I can, I can, I have to say, I can imagine why people like to do it because when you're in a location and there's something flying by, it gives a certain adrenaline um, uh, to actually catch it on camera in a, in a nice way. But actually, the waiting, I think, is quite boring. Oh, yes. Yeah. So you mentioned you just take a backpack. Do you do a lot of uh, walking? Uh, yes. I guess. Actually, I do. Um, um, well, it's, I have two types of, of shootings. I, I have them where I go out to a lake nearby uh, to do long exposure, for instance. Then I don't take that much and I just shoot it from the car and you drive from location to location. I do it with Dominique once in a while with a few other people. Uh, and the other uh, types of shooting is when I go out to the mountains, and that's, that can be for one or more days. And then I take a big backpack and, uh, and my hiking shoes, and in winter my uh, snow walking shoes. And then it's usually, um, yeah, it's 10 to 20 mile, uh, kilometers, and I think it's uh, 5 to, uh, to 10 uh, miles, uh, with quite some uh, altitude dif difference usually. Just to get to a spot uh, at the back of a valley or to go to a mountain top or whatever to, to see if I can find something uh, decent. So, what kind of gear do you use? Um, I use uh, Nikon gear. Uh, it's just uh, the normal uh, DSLR, D800E at the moment. Um, that's my prim primary camera. Um, if I go on the hike type of things, I bring zoom lenses usually, just to make life a little bit more easy. 
And when I go for long exposure, I usually bring uh, prime lenses just to uh, to get the best I can get uh, from where I are, where I am. Yep. And I guess if you filters and tripod and so on. Yeah, yeah, way too much, way too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what fills the backpack. Yeah, and I always take too much, I have to say, but um, yeah, well, it's life of photographer, I guess. All right. Uh, a recommendation for a good tripod. I know that sometimes uh, the people will invest a lot of time on a, on a body, on a camera, but they might skimp on things which are equally important, like tripods. I actually, uh, I, I just invested in new ones. I used to have a Gitsub tripod, the 2 series. And I took that everywhere, but um, it was it, when you're on the sea. But for instance, sometimes go to the Netherlands and, and shoot the coast or somewhere else. Then it's just a little bit too limited for long exposures. For instance, just can't take the beating of the wind that well. And for the mounts, it was a little bit too heavy. So now I have two tripods: a one series for my really right stuff, which I use for hiking in the mountains. It's it's sturdy enough to do what I want to do there. In the mountains, you don't have that much wind. That much wind. And I have a, what is it, the 3 Series, um, really white stuff as well. It's a big one. And that's what I use when I, when I go on long exposure uh, uh, shootings, where I really want uh, ultimate uh, stability. And I have to say, so far, I haven't been using them for three, four months. They're really, really white stuff. It's really good stuff. And uh, I like it so far. Sounds good. Okay, you have a few uh, images to share with us tonight too? Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, let me see if I can also do the screen share thing. In uh, the meantime, I have another last one to last quiz of the day. <laughs> <laughs> this is harder. <laughs> Zurich? No. French part of Switzerland. Did you, did you take that when we did the photo yes. work? <laughs> yes, I know where it is. Geneva. <laughs> right, good. Yeah, that's what so I thought. we have two nail for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I, uh, let me do it like this. You have to tell me. Can you see it like this? Perfect. Yes. I um, I actually selected images I haven't shared yet on uh, Google Plus or anywhere else. Nice. Um, I'm not sure yet if they are finished. So it's uh, with me. Uh, an image can sit on my hard disk for uh, six months before I finally decide whether it's done or not. Um, I actually um, just as a background. I don't do, don't use Photoshop. Um, I do all of my work in Lightroom, okay. and I use filters on location to uh, to make sure I don't get uh, too much overexposure uh, to balance the light, basically. And um, sometimes when I do black and white, I also use uh, Silver FX Pro to get uh, the best tonality in my images. And I usually go back and forth between Lightroom and Silver FX Pro for, day for those. So but the image you see here now is a, is a, a lake. Exposure. Sorry. Sorry? No, I was asking, you don't do exposure blending? No. No, I think I should, but um, no, I could do it, and I sometimes bracket it to, uh, to facilitate it, but, um, um, and I probably have, a, a, I have quite a, a collection of images I could take to Photoshop and work on, but I, I don't get around to it. And, uh, apparently, I have enough from my life and work that I can publish at the moment. So maybe in the in the future. Okay. It's also a time thing, which is uh, yeah. If I can get it right in camera as much as possible and then do my thing in Lightroom, I'm more happy. When you say you use filters, is that graduated uh, ND filters? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. It depends. Yeah, yeah. It, it's graduated. But yeah. For this type of stuff, yes, and um, I, I also use a polarizer once in a while, but I usually don't like the outcome that much, uh, especially when you go wider. 
because of the impact on the sky. But um, the, the graduated filters is, is what I use most. So this is actually a lake uh, nearby called Lake Der Borans. Uh, Dominique will, will know because I think we have, uh, this is a place where I visited with him a while ago. You recognize it, Dominique? Yeah, sure. OK. It's uh, end of November. Uh, my favorite time of year, basically, because the, the mountains start to turn white again, and I have enough color to play with. So this is one. Um, the next one, I'm not, I'm not seeing what I'm going to get now, but OK. This is a little exposure one. It's also not published yet. This is actually from a shoot with Dominique. Um, Five months ago, I guess, Dominique. Yeah, something like this. Uh, uh, Lac Neuchâtel. Um, this is actually I like to do stuff like this as a balance for my hiking stuff because I can. It's a lot less exhausting, and you really take the time for each image. So each image you probably uh, take 15 to 20 minutes to. You have to see the scene. You have to choose the filters, the, the exposure time. And it's quite a zen experience to me. Uh, it clears the head a bit, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice uh, change of, uh, of, of work. And the next one is a, is a winter scene. I selected this one because, uh, well, it's one of my favorites. It's, it's actually my favorite season. Uh, I go out uh, with the snowshoe a lot and try to find situations where uh, Usually, where I have a lot of fog in the scene and I have a lot of uh, and light just coming through, we see where that where it ends. And sometimes it's a backlit scene, sometimes it's lit from the front. This isn't back. It's just uh, and hope that nobody visited yet to spoil the snow, basically. <laughs> the next one is black and white, I think. Yeah. And this one has been sitting on my desk for a year now. <laughs> it's. Um, it's something I do, don't do that much. This is basically uh, the foothills of the Alps. It's just uh, a meadow which has just been uh, mowed by a farmer with some uh, with a sunflower field in the background. Um, what I like in this is that there's some structure in the foreground which leads the eye to the back. There's some light in the back which I like. So yeah, it's a black and white uh, landscape which I appreciate but I haven't published yet. Should I? Yes. <laughs> okay. Why haven't you? Sorry? Why haven't you published it yet? Um, I'm not sure yet. It's it's just uh, it's something. It's sometimes you work on an image uh, and you dodge and burn uh, to get a certain balance. Um, but then there's something you you have a feeling that there's something wrong with it or not perfect, and then I leave it for one to two months and revisit it and probably do all the steps I did again. It's like what the Domini did, did in his dark room. Um, it's, it's, yeah, I guess it's a way of working. It's like the last image I actually posted on Google Plus was a waterfall in black and white. It's been sitting on my disk for a year as well, uh, just to get, get it in, right in my uh, in my feeling, basically, which is a very dodgy thing, um, hard to describe. I don't know. So the next one. Um, this is something that makes me smile a lot. This is um, why I moved to the Alps. Um, it's actually uh, more or less a two-dimensional scene, still with a lot of depth. I try to step away from the the. The, the traditional background, foreground, middle ground subjects uh, to, uh, to create depth. Often, um, I guess it's a bit it has to do with style as well. Um, this is um, a view after a, an early morning rise and a hike, uh, five, six hundred meters up the mountain with snowshoes. And then you get the sunrise lighting up. Actually, this is the Mont Blanc massif, seen from the Swiss side. Uh, with a lot of fog, with a lot of uh, uh, clouds which which haven't uh, risen yet. Uh, usually that happens hour after sunset, uh, sunrise. Sorry. Um, I like the ruggedness and the, and the and the drama in this. 
I made it black and white just to emphasize that. I'm not sure actually how many images I have, but I hope you don't mind. Well, that's okay so far. <laughs> um, this is an image uh, I'm not sure about, but I, I liked it enough to share it just because it uh, it also has something which I, I'm, I'm looking for in, in alpine shots. Uh, I shoot from above towards the opposite mountain. Uh, I always look for how, how the light hits the scene, uh, what fog does to it, uh, a little bit of fresh snow. Uh, that's what I like to run into, basically. Um, the next scene is, uh, is actually a, a very early morning scene in uh, my favorite area of the Alps. It's the south, what is it, northeast, south, southeast of, of uh, Switzerland is uh, called, a place called Engadin. And this is actually the place where I'll be for three to four weeks in the coming uh, month to shoot um, autumn. When I get there a lot is what you see here is uh, fog on the, on, the, on, the, on the lake in the early morning, uh, first snow on the mountains. Uh, you have the big large trees there which turn really bright yellow at this time of year, or well, hopefully in two or three weeks when I'm there. And uh, I will try to do a sunrise every day uh, just to uh, get uh, moody images like this. You know what I like about this image when I asked before? Uh, the, the fact that you don't do exposure blending, mm -hmm. whereas maybe 99, nowadays 99 out of 100 photographers would have taken a bracket, a series of bracket exposures and mm -hmm. blended in some very bright or even relatively bright trees, mm -hmm. black trees there, and make everything the same tonality, and instead you have those really dark trees which I mean that they are the way they look naturally and it's it's great in that okay. respect that you Thank are you. different from uh, from the crowd in that respect and, and that's something I uh, I'm not sure if I managed to do that but that's actually something I try to do on a, on a consistent basis try to be a little bit different uh, yeah I hope there's always something special in an image um, uh, and hopefully I, I, I see it right. And that's always the biggest worry before I, I publish something. Have I seen it right and how will people react? It's actually a nice thing about Google Plus is that uh, it's not that, uh, that it's, uh, it's the best uh, critique platform, but um, you do notice the difference between uh, the, the, a good and a bad image and the response. Actually, I, I have the feeling I get it. So that's why I like Google Plus so much. Let's see what else I have. I had to. I think this is my last one. I had to close with it. It's just uh, so. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's good. It's uh, it's the Matterhorn. It was one of my favorite um, mountains in Switzerland, and uh, I could of course pick. Uh, I have a long exposure version of this one. I could have uh, presented, but I thought uh, let's let's do a, a normal one. I guess it's the most most forward. Uh, most photographed image uh, mountain in, in Switzerland. Uh, it's always hard to get it differently. I'm not sure if I managed here, but I like to see. Uh, not sure if I will publish it, but it's just uh, it's a story about mountains. If you're if you live in Switzerland, if you like mountains, your heart uh, starts uh, beating faster if you're up there. And uh, as I said, there's always something special around the corner, and it's usually not the most obvious subject. You should be shooting to get the best images. So, if you look around around the Matterhorn, what else there is to see? There's a lot more, and uh, it can even be uh, more pretty than the Matterhorn itself. Yeah, that was my last one. Thank you, Johan. See if can I can ask you. Can I ask you a question to both of you? And uh, the question is: uh, Do you print your images? And if you do, how do you print them? Where do you print them? Do you print them at home? Do you use a lab? Do you use an online service? What kind of prints do you like to make? Um, shall I answer first? Go ahead. <laughs> OK. Um, what I, when I, um, I don't do it enough, but what I do note, I, I have a nice Epson printer at home. Um, 
and when I do print my images, you get a better confirmation of how the image looks when then you get it on screen because an image printed is always nicer than you expect it to be when you see it on the screen. But professionally, when I sell um, prints, my my website is hosted at Photo Shelter, and there you can choose between a number of uh, print providers, print suppliers, and you set it up once, and then dependent on whether it's black and white or color, it goes one direction or another, and then it gets printed by a professional lab and, and uh, sent to the customer automatically. Nice. Dr. Renick? <clears throat> yeah, for me it's um, important to really be sure to, to have the complete control over the, the chain of photography. So I have a printer at home and I, I print my images at home. But for me, the, the, the final image is really uh, the ultimate way to, to look at an image. Uh, of course, it can be interesting to see from the monitor, but a, a, a beautiful print is something completely different. Uh, you have more details, you have more depth, you have more luminosity in, in a well-printed image on beautiful paper than just having uh, an image on a computer. And that's why I, I like um, doing exhibition to show these images to others. For me, it's really different. So I have, I need to, to do it all myself to be sure that um, uh, it's the image that looks like I want it to be. Okay. okay. Are you satisfied, Hugo? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm really wanting to, to print more. So I'm investigating. And <laughs> ah, it's like to know what the others are doing. It's a complicated subject. <laughs> All right. Right. So we're going to the close to the end of the, the episode. So we'd like we'd like to share some photographers as usual. Uh, Dominic, do you wanna share a, a photographer tonight? Yes, I have even two photographers. I could I could not decide between both of them, so I decided to show you both. Uh, just one second, I want to share the screen again. Yes. OK. You see my screen? Yes, we do. So the first uh, photographer is Camille Dolny. He's uh, a landscape photographer uh, from Denmark. Uh, he has really beautiful images. Uh, with a lot of dramatic clouds, typically the kind of, of weather that I like. Um, images from Denmark. You have also some sand dunes. That's great for me. <laughs> uh, there are also some long exposure, very nice uh, long exposure here. And uh, I think he has only something like 50. Uh, 5,000 followers, so that's why I think it deserves much more than, than this. These are the same. This one is also very, very interesting. And always a beautiful light in his uh, images. Also quite of a drama here. So that was my, my first uh, Photographer that I could uh, show to you. The second one is, well, it's definitely hard to pronounce. It's Dag Ole Nordhaug. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure the, about the pronunciation anyway. Um, he's also a landscape photographer. He's, he's living in Norway, so again, uh, north uh, country, northern country. And he has also really beautiful photographs um, from Norway, but also here from uh, Cambodia. I saw also others um, from New York, I think. But here you can see some of his, his images. Um, this one I like also a lot. It looks like a bit uh, the one that we mm -hmm. shared before. <laughs> Very nice uh, sunset too. I don't know what you, what you think about it about him, Johan, but he seems to be very 
Very attractive. Looks very good. I, I didn't know him actually. Okay. So, yeah. Good tip. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So that's my second one. Thank you, Dominic. Johan, any one for us? Yeah, I see if I can the screen share again. Because I really need that. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to try to pronounce the name. Uh, it's Grigos Pichorich. Hope I get it right. I got it right. Uh, he's a Polish guy living in Scotland and uh, definitely uh, living in a place I would like to visit soon. Uh, maybe even meet up with him. Uh, I think he has something like 5,000 followers as well. And he deserves a lot more. He has some very interesting work. Uh, I just picked a few which just jumped to me uh, initially. So I like this is also a type of photography I like to do as well. Just to have a a nice, um, a bit of long exposure, a uh, mountain stream in the foreground leading up to something interesting, whether it's uh, weather or mountains in the background. Uh, I like to do that as well a lot. Uh, I really like the light in this one as well. Uh, this is um, something I like because I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little drama to this and uh, he didn't do the obvious, he didn't make a long exposure from it. Yeah, I like the ruggedness of this and then and what it expresses. Uh, Mother Nature, basically. Uh, I think very well captured. Um, this is the type of uh, coastline I wish we would have in Switzerland, uh, Dominique. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> is that Ireland? I actually went to Ireland. I, I'm not sure where. I think this is actually Scotland. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, looks like it. So I definitely need to go there. I've been to Ireland with comparable, um, with comparable uh, coastlines in the last week, which was also uh, very nice to do. Uh, this is also, I think, quite nice. Uh, interesting foreground detail. Uh, a nice guy in the back. Yeah, I didn't select more images, but I think his, uh, his, his profile, uh, probably Dominique does, does know him. Oh, yes. Uh, He's one of my favorites. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he's very nice images, and, and uh, what I like about uh, photographers, uh, to me, to make the click, is also that they talk back, and uh, this guy is definitely somebody who talks back. Yeah, true. Uh, which also makes it, uh, keeps it interesting for everybody. Very nice, thank you, uh, Johan. Um, Hugo, you have someone? Yes, yes uh, let me share the screen. Very quickly, my choice this week would be Jörg Bonner, uh, landscape photographer from Vienna, Austria. Uh, very little known, only about 1,400 people following him. And he has some really, since we are in the topic of mountain landscapes, he has some really nice mountain ones from not just the Alps from all over the world. I think he has some from South America uh, as well. Yeah, this should be Patagonia, I think. It looks like it. On the bucket list. Yes. Oh, ah. Check him out. I'm sure you like Thank you, Hugo. Very nice too. I'll share a quick one. Okay, can you see that? You can see it? Yes. Yeah. Black. Okay, so okay. it's Anthony Gelo. It's a French photographer. He's mostly into cities. Uh, so he has some very nice shots from Paris, like this one, for example. Uh, he went to Italy, too. I like this one of the Coliseum. And a few more classic shots, but there's this one from uh, Paris again. Anyway, he only has uh, about 8,000 8, followers, so if you want to see some nice image of Paris and some cities in Europe, just 
circling. Okay, let's. How do I stop? Sometimes I can't stop the screen share. This time it worked. Oh, yes. Okay, good. So I think we're at the end of the episode. Uh, thank you a lot, guys, for uh, joining us on this show. That was I hope very... it wasn't too boring. Thank oh, no. Me. It was a very interesting and beautiful images you shared. Uh, so thanks a lot. And the next show should be in two weeks, as usual. Uh, any last words, Hugo? Uh, thank you <laughs> for okay. hosting this. So just thank you to, for, to our guests for, uh, for showing some uh, incredible imagery. So maybe just uh, can you tell us uh, where you, we can find you, uh, Dominic and Johan, on internet? Dominic? Yeah, I have a website which uh, is written on the lower corner. It's uh, domdubier.ch. And I, of course, also on Google+. Plus. What about you, Johan? Uh, I can be found at uh, uh, neophoto.com. Uh, I think it's also on the bottom of my... Uh, of my mugshot here. Yes. Uh, go check it out. Okay, perfect. If I can just do a little bit of a plug, I just uh, go ahead. launched my new website at ucphoto.me. Good. I'll take a look too. So it's, all, it's all new. Great. Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you. And to you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. We'll stop here. Goodbye, everyone. I'll just.